from this beginning where we had, um, you know, we found this drug, which again, Ambroxol is an over-the-counter cough medicine available across the entire world, but it's not, it's not actually uh, approved in Canada or the United States. It's not legal to sell it or distribute it. It has no indication in the United States. And actually in Europe and most of the world, it's a, it's a cough medicine. It's not, it's not something that, that's taken for neurological disease. Um, there is one little twist to it, and in, in Europe, so sort of normally you give it 100, uh, you know, 75 or 150 milligrams for cough, um, and it's available as a lozenge, as a children's uh, cough medicine, and as tablets. But interestingly, in, in Europe, it's also given intravenously at 1,000 milligrams to pregnant women to stabilize uh, a baby's lung, lungs during early delivery. And it's actually given but also at very high dose to, to neonates. And actually, so that, that was actually one of our keys because when we started this, we didn't, um, we didn't know what dose to use or we didn't even know, you know what, what people would tolerate. But we did know that, well, they gave it, they give it at 1,000 milligrams to pregnant women. And so that was actually something that I could use for Health Canada to say, hey, they give, this drug is so safe to, be, to give it you know, intravenously at high dose to pregnant women. And, and so this actually, and we have all of these patients with Parkinson's disease, dementia, um, who are actually going to do very badly if we don't do anything. And, and so this was sort of a, something which, which, an argument which they bought uh, that the, because the drug was so safe and because it was given at this high dose to pregnant women that it would probably be safe to, to my Parkinson's patients. Um, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a spe my, co my specialty is cognition, and so I come at this sort of from a cognitive uh, point of view. Uh, so the trial um, was to look at, the, go the original goal was to look at 75 patients with Parkinson's disease, dementia. And so we were actually, again, I was looking for a cognition. I, it's not exactly the trial that I wanted to run. I actually, I was, there are a number of illnesses, for example, Lewy body dementia, for which there's actually very little development. And, and, um, and like there's a, a major need to develop drugs for. However, the, the, we were funded by the Western Brain Institute and, our, and the peer reviewer said, well, you know, um, if you start with patients with Parkinson's disease, then you're absolutely sure that they have something wrong with alpha synuclein. They actually have the disease that you're interested in, Parkinson's disease, and then get cognitive impairment. Whereas if you start with some, some of these other illnesses, you're not sure exactly what they have, whether you know, they might even have Alzheimer's disease. So anyway, so we were looking at Parkinson's disease, dementia. Uh, so the original goal was 75 patients randomized to 25, mil, uh, 25 patients to a high dose of 1,000 milligrams, 1,050 milligrams, 25 to 525 milligrams, and 25 to placebo. Um, we ended up sort of cutting short the middle group because it was so hard to recruit patients for this, this large number of patients from a single center. Our primary endpoints were cognitive, and we used something called the ADAS-COG, which is a scale used for Alzheimer's disease. Um, and it had been, and so it's actually been used in many different clinical trials in mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. And we used something called the, the Clinician's Global Impress, Impression of Change, which was again, a structured interview designed for Alzheimer's disease. And, and this has actually come back to, to bite us and just <laughs> makes, it, it, in the in the butt at the end because those probably weren't good uh, weren't good indicators to start with. It was the ADAS cog and the and the, and 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 the CIGIC. So um, we've actually now uh, the the last patient has has been off medication since June, and we're just opening the data. And this is really our very first look at the data uh, through the trial. We actually our, our my impression was that that we had many patients who were doing really really well. And we actually expected this to be really quite a, a profoundly positive uh, trial. Um, when we first, when our, our statistician took the first look at the data, when we look at the, the, the ADAS cog and the CIGIC, actually the, it, the lines are almost flat, so we didn't actually see any benefit in the, as our, in, in the main outcome measures. So when we actually look at the outcome measures themselves, one of the problems was is that we actually, we had, in, enrolled a huge range of very different patients. Some of them, some of them moderately impaired, but actually we, we, in our placebo group, we actually had patients that were almost normal and some of them actually came out probably with scores that were comparable to what I would do. So, so our, our enrollment, we were sort of in trouble because we had this huge spread of, of patients and 
when we look at, again, when we look at the table of who was enrolled, it turns out that the patients who were on Ambroxol on average had lower education and had lower scores on the 8S, or sorry, worse scores on the 8S COG, the, the Montreal COG of Assessment and the Parkinson's disease, um, the PDCRS. So we are, right from randomization, we were actually in a little bit of trouble. So we didn't meet our primary endpoints. Um, so we're actually going through the data right now to figure out you know, really what happened. And so again, one of our problems was, was, ran, was the randomization and the, and the huge heterogeneity and a, and, a, and a big placebo response. What we can say is that we looked at, we had eight patients out of the 54 who, were, uh, who had GBA mutations. And those patients actually did do better on the ADAS COG. And they did better, um, they did better on, or, so on, on something called the neuropsychiatric inventory. So there's a, there's a, a standard questionnaire around neuropsychiatric syndrome, syndromes called the NPI, the neuropsychiatric inventory. And it looks at 12 different sort of neuropsychiatric questions, apathy, depression, anxiety, hallucinations, and, and mood and the like. And actually patients on Ambroxol did better on the NPI than, than the placebo patients. And again, when we looked at GBA carriers, people who carried mutations in GBA, um, those patients also did better. So again, this is our, just our very first look at the data. We did not meet our primary endpoints, uh, but when we, look through, when we start looking through, we see that there does seem to be some signal in there, and there's certainly uh, cause for, well, I'm a neurologist, so we're not usually optimistic about anything. Um, and especially in cognitive neurology, where we've gone 20 years without really any positive clinical trials, except for Biogen last year, Biogen, the, the monoclonal antibodies that, that might be helpful. Um, yeah, so we've got a little bit of signal. And we also just, you know, other things that we're looking at is it turns out that when we look at blood levels of the medication, they were actually a wide range of blood levels. And so we're actually going to have to sort through these, the patients and figure out if patients who responded biochemically to the medication actually did better. We've actually got a lot of analysis to do, and there's a, we're looking at a whole lot of blood biomarkers and spinal fluid biomarkers, so we've got, again, quite a lot of work to do. So I guess the bottom, the, sorry, the bottom line, or we say that the top line is we didn't meet our primary endpoints. We had a, a number of really significant technical problems right from the outset, and, our, and again, our, our placebo group was so scattered and, and did well uh, but there, there is a little bit of signal there. And I think that, that you know, w what we've got is we've got a terrible, terrible disease, terrible diseases without really disease modifying treatments and, and a medication which is really quite safe. And so we actually hope that we can continue development along these lines.